जय शिवाय टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक व्हिच इज दैट यू नो हॉरर स्टोरीज डेंजर्स ऑफ ऑल द कुंडलिनी अवेकनिंग चक्रा अवेकनिंग सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द हॉरर्स एंड डेंजर्स ऑन दैट पाथ बिफोर वी गेट इन टू दिस बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट द डेंजरस पार्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट टू बेसिक थिंग्स ओके लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड टू बेसिक थिंग्स फर्स्ट थिंग इज इफ यू थिंक कुंडलिनी शक्ति इज सम काइंड ऑफ माइंडलेस मोशनलेस एंड एनिमल काइंड ऑफ यू नो शक्ति that has no intelligence of its own then you are highly wrong you are seriously mistaken kundalini shakti is the shakti of the cosmos the brahmand and it is way beyond your intelligence no matter what you do kundalini is not going to rise up until you are ready and we'll talk in a bit about what it means to be ready okay but kundalini shakti is a super duper intelligent shakti of this brahmand of this cosmos it's not just something very personal to you okay and uh, it connects you to the cosmos so imagine the scale it's way beyond your intelligence human intelligence human mind for understanding so it's not something that it rises and that in then it goes some goes haywire in some other places in your body it doesn't happen that way <laughs> there's nothing like that so this is first point that if you think it's unintelligent and it rises just by itself it rises anytime anywhere and uh, you know it's something to be scared of then you are highly seriously mistaken then you should get off of a spiritual path just you know go to movies eat popcorn and uh, be busy with your life and achieve all your worldly goals a spiritual journey is not for you okay if you are that scared of a person if you are a <clears throat> scary if this these things scare you don't walk this and if you are trying to dispel your fears and if you're trying to understand the truth then watch this video okay this might help you understand all that so this was the first point second point is let's talk about panchakoshas you understand our human existence consists of five different koshas first is annamaya kosha means this physical body your physical body has a uh, lot of systems right circulatory system bones and skeletal muscular system endocrine system respiratory system digestive system lymphatic system nervous system autonomous nervous system and uh, involuntary involuntary nervous systems and then you have inside the vol- uh, involuntary nervous system you have parasympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system so lots of systems are there different kind of systems are there in just your physical existence annamaya kosha then you have your pranamaya kosha energy body now those people those who have their an energy their own energy body in the in perception then what happens is they are able to figure it out whether uh, the energy of a particular place or a person is good or bad is positive or negative they just feel the discomfort so because their own energy body is the, in their perception now what happens is this pranamaya kosha has 72000 nadis channels energy channels just like you have a network of nerves in your physical body just like you have a network of uh, blood vessels in your body okay and uh, that network is very smart in its it, it has been arranged in a very you know intel highly intelligent way 
dirty blood never gets mixed up with the pure blood the veins which are used to carry pure blood arteries are never mixed with veins which carry impure blood by mistake some day your pure blood decided to go into veins instead of arteries no that is not that it does it doesn't happen some day your heart you decided oh why my heart is on the involuntary control let me just control it yes through yoga you can but what i am saying is in for a lay man your nervous system cannot be changed just by your will just by your thought just like that without doing lot of tapas lot of sadhana so that which is involuntary in you suppose you are tensed then also your heart is working suppose you are working doing some physical work work then also your heart is working so exactly in the same way the, that network of 72000 nadi nadis is a highly highly intelligent network of energy channels okay and then other than that you have uh, 114 chakras in pranamaya kosha so pranamaya kosha has nadis and chakras 114 112 inside your human existence but when you become the cosmos through spiritual journey when you expand all the way to the cosmos then those two chakras external chakras are in included are they are they become part of you so that is why we count them so they are total 114 chakras so it's part of pranamaya kosha is part of you etheric body is part of you then third one is manomaya kosha a mental and emotional body where your mind emotion thoughts are wreaking the havoc or are being silent okay then fourth one is your vigyan maya kosha vigyan maya kosha is the intuitive body that you have and uh, some day we'll talk a lot about um, vigyan maya kosha people think its job is just to give you intuition no it's not there's far more purpose to that vigyan maya kosha and then there is anand maya kosha a bliss body which gets activated when a life comes in uh into the physical body when like life takes up the physical body and when life leaves the physical body means at the time of birth and death this kosha becomes activated uh in a normal person but in yogis through yoga and through sadhana this body bliss body is activated it activated in the sense it's not that it's deactivated before and it's just that earlier it was not in your perception but now it is it's exactly the same thing how a child child does not have a ego no child has an ego it's just that his ego is not in his perception to the extent where he can control the ego and when somebody goes through the teenage process that this, this is what is happening the more and more they are knowing their own ego their own personality their own individuality so they are getting a hang of it so that is how this uh, thing is working all so all koshas just like in your physical body body systems are interdependent on each other you cannot say if i raise my hand like this if i'm lifting my hand like this then only my bones are being raised or my muscles are being raised we cannot say just the circulatory system is working right now no nervous system is also working voluntary nervous system is also working when i am raising my hand right so you cannot you know you cannot make someone a surgeon a doctor a surgeon you cannot make them surgeon by not teaching them nervous system can you no i don't want to meet such doctor <laughs> i don't want to meet such doctors so you cannot make somebody a surgeon by keeping one or more of your physical body systems aside right exactly in the same way you cannot make somebody a yogi without teaching them about pranamaya kosha about nadis about chakras and about kundalini right just i have heard people saying that you know not uh, people saying that i want to be spiritual i want to do the yoga and i want to go on my spiritual path but i don't want kundalini i don't want go to go kundalini route well if you can raise your hand and tell me that nervous system was not involved 
or if you can raise your hand or do anything in your with your physical body without involving all of your system <laughs> then i can understand how can you walk a spiritual journey without talking about without going through the kundalini route it's like you know and i wouldn't take the name but i came to know last year about a famous western guru it's very famous one and he has talked all kinds of nonsense about kundalini and all the danger horror stories and he's but he says his spiritual journey is complete because <laughs> nothing happened to his kundalini okay okay his kundalini did not rise and didn't make its own make its way all the way till sahasrara but his spiritual journey is complete that is to me saying like okay the physical development of the body is complete eh? but nervous system is still in a very very childish state state you know what do we call such person <laughs> it's a disease right not having a fully developed nervous system but saying that your full body is fully developed your evolution as a in the human body is complete how is that possible if nervous system is not working then mean many of the motor functions will not work people will not have control over their body even the voluntary functions will go on involuntarily hand may rise without even your wish and will <laughs> so this is what it is so a lot of people have not understood the kundalini and all these things and you know it's like eating a burger eating a burger but before eating it you open it and then you throw away all the green stuff and then you throw away all the onion and chilies and whatever was there and you just take the patty and the bread because you like it and then you eat the burger no that's not burger then <laughs> it could be a burger for you but it isn't the complete dish the way any cook might have cooked so what i'm trying to say here is that a lot of western people make a mistake when it comes to spirituality and when they are trying to be spiritual trying to do yoga they will just take few things that they prefer to hmm. they'll put the atma aside they put the karma aside in its real way sense because if you put the atma aside and if you put the reincarnation aside then karma is just the doing of this life but then there is no explanation for why one is born rich and another one is born poor right why one is born in the body full complete body while another one is born with missing body parts or a hole in a heart why one is born a very beautiful and blessed another one is not not uh, like that so then they until you count take into account the karmas of previous lifetime until you understand atma until you un- take um, understand the concept of reincarnation until you understand these things you are actually not being spiritual you are eating a burger but throwing away lots of things and then you are thinking you are trying to become a surgeon who keeps the who doesn't worry about the nervous system so next time he is going to operate your shoulder or your hand everything may look right from the top bones all bones are connected properly all muscles are connected properly His skin is attached properly everything looks proper it's just that hand doesn't move anymore because nervous system has been destroyed so you see what i'm trying to say you cannot stay ignorant about pranamaya kosha about kundalini about chakras about other 72000 nadis you cannot stay ignorant about all these things and say okay i want to do my sadhana i want to be spiritual i want to attain enlightenment i want to walk the path of moksha no it's not going to happen till the time an integration of all your panchakoshas happens till the time you understand your own existence then only you are going to understand or merge with the cosmic existence until you accept who you are until you accept your humanity you're not going to have a divinity so this was the second point so kundalini is not something just like your pure blood never goes and flows into the uh, in, with the impure blood there's a clear cut different system and na- network of blood vessels the ones that carry pure blood the ones that carry impure blood exactly in the same way thousand times more intelligent 
infinite times, billion, gazillion times more intelligent is the system of Kundalini. The system of your 72,000 Nadis. It's way much more intelligent than that. And complex than that. Okay. Kundalini just, just doesn't go here and there. Because Kundalini is called as Kundalini only when it flows from the Sushumna Nadi. So it's not going to go here and there. Where there is in some other energy networks. It, it doesn't work that way. Okay. It's just an ignorance that my Kundalini went wrong on the wrong path, on the wrong side. <laughs> it's a joke. They tried telling a doctor last night, my arteries, the pure blood went to the impure blood and now I'm feeling suffocated. Doctor will give you something for your mind first. Okay. So this is the thing. Now, another important thing to understand. Let's talk about all the dangers and horrors. Okay. So horror stories comes from the people. First thing who are, first point, those who are ignorant. Okay. A lot of people were ignorant for a very long time. That earth is round. They used to think that earth is flat. Until we had telescopes and until in India, in Vedas, we have the earth being shown as round, as a sphere. It's not being shown as a flat surface. Okay, so in ancient cultures, they knew that planets are round, planets are like that. And uh, but when the system changed, system was changed, our science was, science uh, got some instruments and telescopes and this and that. To actually be able to see that the earth is actually round. It's a sphere. And when they saw that and then they tried to tell everybody. Then there was a big civil war kind of condition. Where church went on denying that no let's just tell people it's flat. <laughs> and some of the ignorant people still want to believe that earth is flat. <laughs> so you know ignorance is bliss and if that is the condition you are not meant for a spiritual journey yet you shouldn't be walking a spiritual journey okay if you are enjoying your ignorance because ignorance is not bliss ignorance is pain ignorance is suffering that is what a spiritual journey is trying to teach you isn't it so if you are enjoying your ignorance and you don't want to change yourself, your ideas, your ideologies, your knowledge. If you do not want to expand your mind, your knowledge. Then please get out of this path immediately. Because you are the person who is going to create horror stories tomorrow. So you see who have created these kind of horror stories about <laughs> Kundalini. Those who were scared, those who were ignorant and they do not want to expand their knowledge. They do not want to expand their existence. They do not want to expand their consciousness, consciousness whatsoever. These are the kind of people who create horror stories. Forget about Kundalini's. It try, I have as a part of a National Cadet Corps training, I actually did a Mountaineering, a lot of mountaineering in Himalayas. So, you know, there was a time when we were talking about climbing Everest. And a lot of people just as advised us against that. Oh, it's very scary and only one in thousand ever is able to go up. Yes, that is true. <laughs> one in thousand is able to go up that's a data that's the fact and the same is the thing with the kundalini only only in one person out of millions kundalini rises all the way to the top okay and so and then when i was riding a scooter as a when i was a teenager i learned to ride a scooter and it was a scooter with the gears in it four or five gears in it and uh, 
इसको इन माई टाउन आई वॉज द ओनली गर्ल ड्राइविंग स्कूटर सो इट वॉज अ बिग थैबू एंड अ बिग चेंज फॉर द पीपल देयर टू जस्ट सी दैट अ गर्ल इज राइडिंग अ स्कूटर सो आई गॉट ऑल काइंड ऑफ एडवाइस दैट नॉट टू डू दैट एंड यू नो मेनी बॉयज मेनी पीपल जस्ट ट्राई टू स्केयर मी राइट कमिंग बाय राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी जस्ट ट्राई टू जस्ट स्केयर द scare me and see if she if i lose the balance and just go down the drain or somewhere or just lay flat somewhere so lot of people try to push me away from the path then a lot of people used to say something else so no matter what i'm trying to say here is no matter what you do even if you go and join army navy or commando forces even if you do a taekwondo or karate seriously or if you go for a um, swimming olymp in the olympic size pool or in the ocean everything is dangerous even driving a car outside on the road is dangerous so many people are killed and you can just get the data for your town or your city where you are living and see how many people die so you don't want to drive the car if you are that kind of a person don't drive it if fear is what controls your actions your steps in life and fear is who you are then better stay away from spiritual path okay just live your life normally this path is not meant for you there is danger even in breathing in the cities and countries where there is a lot of pollution it's a danger in breathing and just roaming around freely in lot of areas where there was a nuclear test was done and there is a radiation like in japan when nuclear bomb was dropped there are still areas where radiation is very bad and it impacts so you cannot even roam around freely so there is danger in living so what to do should we just go into the coffin right away <laughs> <laughs> because there is danger in breathing eating eat the food that you are eating you don't know when you will be hit by e coli or salmonella or what kind of uh, dirty bacteria or viruses and the air that we breathe in the pollens that we have the trees and plants it's very dangerous just the living is very dangerous so we should be dead no <laughs> there is danger in everything okay so this is the this is about danger now what is this is just on the side when how people have created horror stories these are the people who have fearful people have created the horror stories those who were not able to climb the everest till the top those who did not reach the summit of everest were the ones who have created the horror stories never ever the person who has been to the summit will ever try to scare you because he knows there is nothing to be scared of he has completed the journey only those who have failed their journey miserably failed their journey will talk about the horror stories the ones who have been successful in doing something they do not have horror stories they have the stories of courage and strength they have their stories are inspiring inspiring life inspiring people inspiring others around them but horror stories comes out of those who have been a miserable failure so whom do you want to listen those who have failed or those who have been successful <laughs> your choice again okay your choice again whom do you want to listen those who have failed or those who have been successful in their journey towards anything for anything not just this spiritual journey even climbing the mount everest or you know trying to learn shooting or arrow or swimming or karate or taekwondo or kung fu or anything just anything driving cooking at times i just cut my fingers or you know burn myself here and there while cooking so i should i stop cooking no <laughs> i love it <laughs> and i have had more success stories to share about cooking since the age of 12 then the unsuccessful or failure or the mishap mishaps that has that have happened so i have less of that so you know it's up to you who you listen 
Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is trying to convince you. A lot of people believe earth is flat. You can go join them. A lot of people have seen the proofs, have seen, have the mind intelligence working and uh, they know what it is. So you can join that bandwagon and see for yourself. Not everything can be uh, explained to you in a theoretical manner. There are things for which you need to experience. You need to have a direct experience. So you cannot just uh, read somewhere or about Kundalini and uh, think you know about it. No, sorry. You don't know. By reading, you know nothing. Read however much you want to about love and you will never know what love is until you yourself fell in love. Watch any amount of movies and read all the literature about true love. You will not understand it until it happens to you. All the unconditional love that we talk about, you think you understand it but just by reading, just because your friends are going through it, just because somebody else is going through it, you think you understand it? No, you don't. You don't understand compassion, you don't understand faith, you don't understand uh, love, you do not understand courage, you do not understand all these things are meant for direct experience. Reading about them, having words about them and reading literatures or watching movies or having seeing others having that experience does not mean you know it. You will know these things only through direct experience. Exactly in the same way. If ever, if ever your kundalini rises, you will know what it is. And until it has not risen, which it doesn't anyways in one, one in a million is able to raise their kundalini successfully. Okay, so 99% of the chances are it's not going to rise in this life for you. 1% of the chance is that it may. Now let's see what, how it rises, when it rises, you know. So, just you see the nature of fire. If you are burning a candle or if you are doing anything, the nature of fire is to rise up. We are not forcing the fire. We are not if when everything in this world is bound by gravity, on this planet is bound by gravity, if a leaf is falling, it's coming down, it's not going up. A fruit is falling for Newton, it's coming down, it's not going up. So everything is bound by gravity. How come fire is not? Why the nature of fire is to rise up against the gravity? Gravity is not working on the fire. The element of fire is free of gravitational pull, is free of magnetic energy. Right? Exactly in the same way. This is just an example to make help you understand that the nature of the Kundalini is to rise up. It's the nature. But when, in, when does it rise up? Only when the conditions are right. How will fire ignite itself? You cannot just burn the candle or light up the candle without using a lighter or a matchbox or something to light it up with. Hmm? So you need fire to create fire. Right? It cannot, you cannot just, even in the forest forests, when leaves and the soil, the tree bark, when all of that is having a friction, a lot of friction because of the wind, because of the heat. Only when hundreds of conditions and hundreds of factors are there, hundreds of conditions are right, only then forest fire happens. Can you make it happen just anytime and anywhere and in any way? No, it. Only that which rises up against the pull of the gravity, against the pull of the earth, that which rises up, has an intelligence of its own. And fire is just a very tiny, very, very small example in comparison to the intelligence of the Kundalini Shakti. 
So Kundalini Shakti has a nature of rising up. And when does it rise? Only when the conditions are right. What conditions? Only when all your chakras are clean and clear. Okay? And what does it mean to have a clean and clear chakra? Means when all, all your chakras actually have, chakras have blockages in them. Which shows up as chitvritti. So the path is not clean and clear for Kundalini to rise up. And it is not going to rise up into, because just because it wants to rise up and its own path or the highway is not clear. So it will just take some other track or some side road from here, some internal road from the city and then will try to reach up. No, Kundalini doesn't do all these things. <laughs> if the artery in your heart has a blockage, it won't take a detour. And will use another vein to save you from a heart attack. Okay. Heart attack will happen because the artery is blocked. If the blood is not going to flow from some other vein. Just because the its own path has been blocked by the fat or the, or the cholesterol inside. It's not going to take some other path. Exactly in the same way, Kundalini is not going to take a detour through other nadis, other energy channels, just because its own path is blocked. So be sure it's not going to rise. Until path is 100% clear. Now, clean and clear means, when somebody walks their spiritual journey, then usually the pranic shakti starts strengthening itself. And pranic shakti becomes very strong. And the more the pranic shakti in the consciousness becomes strong in you, the more you start became, becoming aware of yourself, the more you know the nonsense that happens in, in your existence. We become more and more conscious of what is with what all our existence holds. And at times people have done bad karma. I know it doesn't sound nice, and, uh, but it's the bitter truth. All those people, those who have tortured others in last 2000 years of human history, the bad and bloody kind of history that we all have. So all those who were torturing, killing others and uh, those who were in the army, torturing people to take out their organs and do all kinds of bad things, bad stuff, psychological torturing, physical torturing and what not. So you think those kind of people are not being born today? Yes. People are taking another birth, another human body. And when they are taking human body, what happens is, so we are in a, what I'm trying to explain here is that we all have done some karma. And that's the reason we are here. If we would have been left with no karma, there was no reason to take a body, then we would have been enlightened or self-realized. Right? So, when people walk their spiritual journey and they do lot of Kriya Yoga, Pranayams, Hatha Yoga, Tantra, practice this and that through any medium or through any path of the yoga, different kinds of yoga, no matter what you take, your pranothan happens. Pranic energy becomes really, really strong. And consciousness starts rise, rising. So you start becoming aware of all that you are. And that includes all the karma that you have done in this life, previous lives, and more previous than previous than previous in any lifetime. Any and every lifetime. You start becoming aware of that. Can you handle it? Can you handle all, all the nonsense that we all have, you all have done? We all have done bad things and good things. Can you handle it? Can you face it? That is the question. Those who are not able to face it, they end up crying. They become psychological patients. They lose their mental balance while walking on their spiritual journey. So a spiritual journey means facing yourself. Whatever good or bad you might have done, this is the time when you face it all. 
as it is said in some of the scriptures, judgment day. So it's not a judgment day. Let's just first take an account. This is an accounting day. Okay. Nobody is there to judge and nobody is there to do accounting. You yourself are an accountant for that. Are you ready? Are you ready to face yourself? Are you ready to handle what you have done? Are you, are you ready to do the forgiveness work that it requires for all those who have harmed you? So exactly the same way, this is one thing that I am telling, telling you about which makes people go crazy, which makes people go lose mental balance because they learn about their karmas. Another thing is, until now, you may not know that how angry you could be. But when you start walking a spiritual journey, suddenly the anger, anger, suppressed anger of all your lifetimes is going to come out. And when you see it, it may appear like a volcanic thing. Because just getting angry here and there, little bit, little bit, even that, if that bothers you a lot and if your own emotions bothers you a lot, then whatever has to come out is going to come out in a complete load. Truck load of bullshit is going to come out through a spiritual journey. Are you ready to handle it? If you are not, please stay ignorant and please do not, please stay unconscious Please stay sleepwalker, be a sleepwalker. Do not walk your spiritual journey. A spiritual journey requires a lot of courage. Facing yourself, facing all the bullshit that we keep on telling ourselves. Having the courage to forgive ourselves and the other people. Having the courage to stand in the darkest hour of your own self-image. Okay? So spiritual, that is why we say yogi can only be the one who is a kshatriya, a warrior. Not as in warrior to fight somebody else outside in the world. Yeah, if there is a need, we'll do that as well as a yogi. Yogis are warriors. But it is about, it's easy to fight somebody else. Because you are very good in accepting, accepting other people's mistake. Yes, he deserved that. He did that crime. He deserves that punishment. What about you? You might have done the same crime in the previous life. What about that? A lot of people are into the jails right now. Those who have not committed a crime in this life, but they have been falsely accused for something and they are spending a jail time. What have they done in the previous lifetime that has made the karmic situations accordingly in this lifetime for these people to be jailed? Karma is a double-edged sword. You know, when it comes to karmic settlement, when it comes to understanding karma, it's not just about cutting the other person's head. It's about cutting your own head. And when I say head, it is about what I mean here is ahem, ahankara, ego, the identities that you have created in your head. That's what I'm talking about. So do you have the courage to dissolve all your identities, your ahem, your ego? Do you have the courage to go into samarpan? Surrender, not to somebody outside of you, just have a surrender, samarpan within. Do you have the necessary shraddha, devotion, not to somebody or something, objectless devotion, objects le objectless samarpan, shraddha, objectless faith, objectless courage, unconditional do you have the courage to become unconditional from the conditional being that you are? Only then you can rise your kundalini. Only then you can understand all these things. Okay? So when pranothan happens, pranic shakti becomes stronger. Consciousness also becomes very strong. That does not... And different chakras are responsible for different kinds of holding different kinds of chitvrittis, okay? Different kinds of manifestation, like fear is being held 
in your Mooladhara Chakra. Fear of survival, not just this physical survival, emotional survival. People run after relationships. People go into bad relationships and still they are not able to come out of it. They don't want to come out of it. Even if there is somebody else to save them, they do not want to come out of it. Why? Fear of unknown. Known devil is better than an unknown angel. These kind of theories people have. So what do we expect from them? They will create horror stories. So this is the danger. The real danger is of facing yourself. The real danger is of surrendering samarpan. The real dangering, danger is in removing all your identities and becoming nobody. And everybody. The real danger is in facing all the bullshit that we have done. Not just in this life. In all the previous lives. And not just from the actions point of view. Emotional bullshit that we have done. And we keep on doing in this life. So it's about facing all these things. This is the real danger in walking the spiritual path. Not just raising in your raising your kundalini. There is no such thing as raising a kundalini. You cannot raise a kundalini. All you can do is just remove the blockages. That is all that you can do. Rest that shakti in itself is so intelligent. And its nature is to rise up like a fire. Only when all the factors are matching. Everything is alright. Then that fire goes up. And then that fire starts and then it goes up. So no, there is nothing. You cannot raise a kundalini at all. Kundalini rises by itself. All you can do is remove the blockages from its path. And by that I mean remove the blockages from each and every chakra. Remove the chit chitvrittis. Chakra by chakra. Go on awakening chakra by chakra. And not everybody's kundalini in this lifetime is going to rise up from muladhara. Yes, it rises from muladhara. But the manifestation of it for some people may be just from the anahata chakra and above. If they are to raise their kundalini successfully. A spiritual journey is a journey of many lifetimes. And this may be your first lifetime walking it. That's the reason you are watching this video. That's the reason you are very scared of Kundalini and all these things. That's the reason you want to check and make sure Kundalini is not dangerous <laughs> before you pursue your spiritual path. Right? So anybody who is watching this video is walking their spiritual journey and this is their first lifetime. So forget about it. No Kundalini rising is going to happen in this lifetime. It takes many lifetimes. Okay? Like for you can say that in this lifetime, I only did tapas or sadhana for five years and my kundalini rises, rised, was rising and uh, the enlightenment happened and self-realization happened. That doesn't mean a spiritual journey can be walked in just five years. No. That means I have done all the tapas and so much of tapas and so much. I, and when I was enlightened, actually the thought that came to, came to me was... As if in all my lives, I was just walking a spiritual journey. There was no other pursuit. There was nothing else. There was no other purpose. Then to keep on purifying yourself, purifying yourself from the physical body, from the pran maya kosha, from the manu maya kosha, from the vigyan maya kosha. And then ultimately after 5-6 lifetime, here I am. And this is the story of, this is the truth about anybody who has walked their spiritual journey and have attained the self-realization. That it's a journey of multiple lifetimes. And it is a journey, you know, and this may be your first lifetime doing this thing. Consciously walking a spiritual journey. Unconsciously everybody is doing that. And they may or may not go anywhere <laughs> until they become conscious about it because it's a journey of becoming 100% conscious. Enlightened beings are 100% conscious. Self-realized beings are 100% conscious. Moksha is what they attain. So, no need to be scared of that. Okay, no need to be scared of Kundalini. Just 
understand the panch koshas and how they function and don't in, do no need to read about kundalini no need to do anything about kundalini focus more and only on your chitta vrittis patanjali maharshi patanjali or adi guru shankaracharya or bhagwan shri krishna in uh, gita nobody ever said rise arjun rise your kundalini maharshi patanjali didn't say kundalini avroha aroha he said chitta vritti nirodha <laughs> he didn't talk about kundalini <laughs> why it rises up when you are trying to raise your hand are you thinking whether your nervous system is working oh, okay i raise my my nervous system now no it's part of your system it's part of your body physical body you may be raising hand to pick up a glass and in the process nervous system is taking its part doing its job exactly in the same way you focus on chitta vritti nirodha removing your chitta vritti is removing your vasanas your sanskaras you work on that kundalini will do what it has to do by itself okay no need to be scared about it no need to read all about it no need to keep on taking an account of okay so now this is going on this route oh now this has taken a detour no it doesn't these things do not work like that okay it's a very subtle system it's a highly intelligent network and it's a highly intelligent system so stay assured that A spiritual journey is about facing yourself facing the darkness within facing the light within facing the bad deeds that you have done facing the good deeds that you have done facing all of it and still surrendering going into samarpan okay so just think about all these things there's no need to be scared of and again nobody is forcing you to walk your spiritual journey nobody is forcing you to have more pranic shakti and become more conscious nobody is forcing these things on you it's your choice what you make out of your life how you live it how you end it it's all your choice make a wise choice okay namaste jai shivaya